Trinidad and Tobago is unique among the Caribbean islands. With a population of just under one and a half million, this twin island state, apart from its varied people and culture, and its position as land of the hummingbird, the calypso, and birthplace of the steel band, is the only significant oil producer in this chain of island states. <laughs> The oil industry employs 10,000 people and provides indirect employment for at least twice as many. Oil in commercial quantities was first found in Trinidad well over 100 years ago. Hugh Hines, special advisor to the Minister of Energy and Natural Resources, explains. The history of the oil industry in Trinidad and Tobago dates back to the 19th century when in 1857 the first well was drilled for oil in the vicinity of the Pitch Lake. The industry may be divided into four phases. The first phase from 1857 to 1962, where we had the early growth of the industry, the establishment of refineries, uh, and the establishment of a Ministry of Petroleum and Mines. The second phase starts from 1963 and goes to 1972. In this phase, there was the consolidation of the oil industry and the involvement of the government in the practical aspects of the industry and the beginning of the East Coast production. The third phase is from 1973 to 1982, in which case we had the energy crisis where there was the rapid increase in oil prices and government's greater involvement in the industry and the development of the natural gas industry. To find oil, seismic surveys are conducted on land and at sea in order to search out the structures that exist under the surface of the earth. Shock waves are set off by a controlled explosion near the earth's surface. The pattern of seismic waves that results is carefully recorded and this information allows geophysicists and geologists to make maps of the subsurface. Trinidad and Tobago government geologists, geophysicists, and engineers continuously review the data used by operating companies to select well locations to ensure that the best drilling sites are being used. The Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources also classifies the type of well drilled. This has a direct bearing on the amount of tax payments made by operating companies. In its natural state in the earth, oil may be under a tremendous amount of pressure. This pressure has to be controlled in order for oil to be produced safely. A Christmas tree is installed to monitor and control pressure. Once the well can flow on its own. When this pressure subsides, a surface pump, known as a rocking horse, because of its shape and up-down movement, lifts the oil up to the surface. Wells require repair and maintenance. Mobile work over rigs or winches are used when remedial operations become necessary.
Trinidad and Tobago is one of the oldest petroleum producing provinces in the world. In many of its fields, natural pressures have long subsided. Enhanced recovery techniques have resulted in the winning of additional millions of barrels of oil. Oil produced from these wells is sent to gathering stations. Here, ministry inspectors work with their counterparts in the industry to determine the amount and quality of oil produced. Whether you drill on land or offshore, the same principles apply. Varying sea conditions, however, demand even greater safety precautions. Living accommodation must be provided on the drilling rig because operations at sea may be a 24-hour job. The T combined platform comprises the National Gas Company platform, a development drilling platform, and a production platform. Much of Trinidad and Tobago's oil and natural gas come from fields off the East Coast. Separation of oil from gas, sand and water takes place on this platform. Some of the excess gas is collected and compressed to the National Gas Company's compressor platform for sale locally. For reasons of safety, what is left unused is burnt at the flare. Supply ships continually ferry equipment, materials and supplies to the offshore installations, each one taking up to 200 tons per day. Helicopters transport work crews, lifting as many as 15,000 passengers per month at peak periods. At such times, chefs may have to prepare as many as 1,000 satisfying meals per day, all offshore. Crude produced offshore may be exported after fiscalization. This single boy mooring at Amoco Galeota is a special facility from which most of the oil produced off the east coast is exported. The larger of the two local refineries is located at Point Pair. This forms part of the assets and interests of Textron, which was purchased by the government of Trinidad and Tobago in 1985. At the handover ceremony, the Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. George Chambers, concludes his address. As we take one step further towards the realization of the hope of a truly national oil company, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, for their part, who are the ultimate shareholders in this enterprise, must not underestimate the enormity of the challenge that lies ahead. It behoves us, nevertheless, to accept with maturity our responsibility for ensuring that this act redounds to the benefit of the nation. Confident that our experience in the industry over the years has prepared us for this moment. You have my assurance that the task of running this company will be undertaken with the utmost professionalism and the business conducted on the soundest commercial principles. The first nationally controlled refinery is at Point Forte and was bought by the government from Shell in 1974. This integrated enterprise now operates under the name Trintoc, the Trinidad and Tobago Oil Company. This generating plant supplies 50 cycle electrical power to the refinery as well as to the entire borough of Point Forte. 
One of the products of the refining process is bitumen, which is used in road construction. Bitumen mixed with asphalt from Trinidad and Tobago's Pitch Lake produces a superior quality of road surface. A very small percentage of this country's total petroleum production is consumed locally. However, the bulk of its refined oil products is exported. The Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources plays a significant role in this regard, as explained by Mr. Frank Luking. The role of the Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources is to manage the country's petroleum and other mineral resources in a manner such that it would optimize the social, economic, and financial benefits to the country. As you may be aware, petroleum contributes some 50% of the energy supply to the entire world. However, in Trinidad, petroleum plays a much more important role in that it supplies some 99% of the energy supplies. We utilize some 10% of our country's petroleum production. The other 90% of the country's petroleum production is used to generate revenues to the central government. For example, back in 1973, Petroleum contributed some 30% of the country's revenues. In 1975-76, with the oil boom, increasing oil prices, and also increasing oil production, we found that petroleum was producing up to 70% of the country's revenue. However, today, with decline in production and also decline in oil prices, we find that petroleum contributing some 40 to 50 percent of the country's revenues. The Ministry of Energy conducts its role within a certain legal framework. This legal framework includes the Petroleum Act of 1969, the Petroleum Production and Subsidy Act, and the Petroleum Taxes Act, and all its subsequent regulations. Under the Petroleum Act of 1969, the ministry is empowered to grant licenses to various companies to conduct operations in Trinidad. Among these operations are the exploration for petroleum, primarily through geologic and geophysical means, such as by seismic surveys. It allows the companies to carry out drilling and production activities, pipelining or transportation of oil, gas, and water through pipelines the refining of petroleum, also the conversion of petroleum into chemicals in petrochemical plants, and finally, in the export and in the marketing of petroleum products. The National Petroleum Marketing Company Limited was created in 1972. It is wholly state-owned and now conducts all marketing of petroleum products in Trinidad and Tobago. These include liquefied petroleum gas, lubricating oils, greases, and chemicals. In a single year, approximately 30 million liters of kerosene and 460 million liters of mortal gasoline produced in local refineries are sold to the public. This Horton's Fair holds in bulk storage up to 210,000 pounds of liquefied petroleum gas. At cylinder filling stations, the gas is bottled in 20 or 100 pound cylinders for sale to consumers. Diesel, gear and hydraulic oils are distributed for use in tractors and other heavy equipment. The flagship of the national airline 
BWIA's TriStar L1011 fills up with 100 kiloliters of locally refined aviation fuel. Trintock owns and operates a dairy farm at Chatham to the southwest of Point Forte. Milk is sold to the Nestle Production Company while young bulls are sold within the community. Trintopec also has a farm in the Palo Seco area. The Pleasant Park housing project was started and developed by Texaco in the 1960s. Other housing developments put in place over the years exist in Point Forte, Palo Seco, and Guayaguayari. of the Trintoff Public Relations Department. Welcome to the Trintoff Oil Quiz. The Oil Quiz is part of the Trintoff Oil Education Program and the quiz began as a written examination administered by the Ministry of Education. Advances in global technology for oil exploration, production and refining must be attentively monitored if the local industry is to remain vibrant. Ingenuity has reinforced the link between oil and society in Trinidad and Tobago over the last 40 years. One outstanding example of this ingenuity has been the invention from oil drums of the steel pan reputedly the only new musical instrument of the 20th century. With a Spain's taken an effort as it took to develop PAN, institutions have been created to foster research and development in the oil industry. The Department of Petroleum Engineering at the University of the West Indies, the National Institute of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology, are playing a key role in developing the human resources needed to develop oil in Trinidad and Tobago. Meanwhile, the search for oil continues apace here. The George S. Galloway rig permits drilling with the help of satellite communications. 
Activity on the drilling platform is continually monitored by television cameras which provide direct contact via satellite with Amoco headquarters. Hello, Tulsa. <laughs> Hello. How's the well doing? Uh, seem to be running. Should a problem arise, this facility permits instant analysis of data in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and development of alternatives to assist decision making on site. Uh, what you're uh, accumulating there is... Given its tremendous oil reserves, the ongoing training of nationals, and the relentless efforts to develop new areas of technology, the future of its oil industry looks very encouraging for Trinidad and Tobago.